Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, I'm Uncle Reddit, and this is r slash Tales from Tech Support. So, missed yesterday's upload, sorry about that, Monday, uh, between driving most of the weekend and working on stuff and all the rain. I was going to try to record outside, but it's hot. Florida in July is not all that pleasant. Anyway, we're down here in Citra, Florida, right outside Ocala, almost halfway between Ocala and Gainesville, so... Yep, if you're in the area, let me know. You can buy me a beer. All right, let's read some stories. Wherein your hero gets a bad performance review for doing a month's work in a few hours. I'd been hired as a junior mainframe programmer, my first real programming job. I'd just finished six months of COBOL training and with Y2K approaching, the company was desperate to get more developers. I spent my first couple of months learning various mainframe technologies, including JCL, Job Control Language, which tells jobs to run, when to run them, and how, and a few other things. A job in this context is a series of multiple programs, usually COBOL, run in sequence by the JCL. If any step in the job fails, there's a set of written instructions for operators to use to figure out how or if they can restart the job and complete it. One thing which was very painful was the process of trying to get these things to run in a mainframe test region. I had to copy over the files individually and then manually cut and paste a bunch of information to get the software to run on a new region. Since I was using an IBM terminal emulator that had VBA installed, I started playing around with it and soon built myself a set of tools to automate copying JCL, all the programs the JCL would run, and update the data for me. It made life much easier. More on that later. The team lead from hell. Our team lead was interesting. She was a former operator. She didn't know much about programming, but she knew everything else about the system. If something needed to be done, she couldn't program it easily. But if you went to her, she could tell you anything you needed to know to get it done yourself. A senior developer was transferred to our team, and after a few weeks, she was sick of how our nightly batch jobs would keep failing. The JCL only allocated a bare minimum of disk space to each step, and we would routinely get calls at night saying a job had run out of disk space. So this developer started upping the disk space for the jobs, but the team lead ordered her to stop. If the jobs don't fail, they won't need us. Holy crap, our team lead was deliberately hobbling development because if we did our job too well, they might want fewer programmers and she couldn't program. As it turns out, I'm a pretty good programmer and quickly started being very productive. So the team lead naturally hated me. I was a threat. It probably also didn't help that I asked her why she kept a Bible on her desk and in the ensuing conversation revealed that I wasn't a Christian. Y2K was closing in and the inevitable code freeze hit. I was bored. I was sitting in my cube doing nothing all day long. So I went to the manager and asked what I could do. <laughs> so, like I said, we're at my mom's place and she's not used to me recording so she doesn't know the drill. She went into the bathroom. Now we're in an RV. She went into the bathroom to sneeze and blow her nose and all that stuff and uh I don't think she realizes I can still hear her, and I think you guys can too, so uh, I'll get back to you in a sec. <laughs> Go see your team lead. Uh-oh, I knew this wasn't going to end well. I went to see our team lead. She looked at me and said, We've been needing a new mainframe test region for a while, but we haven't had the time to build one. This is perfect for you. I didn't realize the full scope, but when I asked around, I was told this was a month of cutting and pasting files from region to region. An entire month of control C, control V, and manually updating all the data in the files to point to the new region. My team lead finally found a way both to kill my productivity and punish me. I went back to my desk, seriously depressed. My first real programming job and I was getting F's by politics. This company also refused to let me have an empty cubicle with a window seat because those were reserved for senior developers. Then I remembered my VBA tools. They could only operate on a single JCL file at a time but that would save me some time. But I'd still have to manually run this once for every VBA file, entering all the new region data by hand. That's when I built my first spider. I realized I could write code to walk through the primary region and feed all the data to the VBA code to do this for me. It took me a few hours to get it working and I ran it. I went to a late lunch and it was almost done when I got back to my queue. After a bit of time, it finished and in poking around, it looked like it was done. I sent out an email to my team letting them know I was finished. But since I'd never done this before, could they please double check my work? People started coming over to my cube asking me how I did it. The manager came over amazed. 
The team lead sent me an email, copied to the entire team, saying that I was sloppy and hadn't updated the email addresses. That took me a couple minutes to fix. In my six-month evaluation, she wrote that I was sloppy, the email addresses, and didn't show attention to detail because I'd written the code in VBA. It wasn't maintainable and thus was useless to everyone else. Fortunately, the manager understood what was going on and ignored this, but that was my first experience with corporate IT politics. It's rarely stopped since then. So now I almost know how guys who do live spots uh, on radio shows and the morning shows and stuff like that feel. Um, <laughs> it's a little different here. There's a lot of us in this RV, and I am kind of monopolizing the, uh, the airspace right now in here. So I'm going to try to be quick and get this done so that everybody else can go back to their normal lives. Once was a man. So this was a call from last year, and it was probably one of the craziest customer rants I've heard. Me, thank you for calling the IT help desk. This is my name. How may I assist you? Customer picks up in a huff. My Outlook doesn't look right. Can you fix it? Me, how does Outlook not look right? Does the text look like different font? Did the view change? Etc. Customer, just fix it. Me, okay, let me sign into your computer then. Can you give me the computer? Customer, it's computer number. Can you see it yet? Me. Not yet. It's still loading. Give me a minute. Customer. Ever since its update, your software has been ruining my life. I was once human. Computer loads mid-rant. I see that his zoom in outlook was reduced to 0%. I set it quickly back to 100%. Now you've reduced me to pause. Customer. What did you do? Me. Well, the zoom was reduced to a minimum setting. I hit this button over here to reset it. Alternatively, you could hit. Customer hangs up. So the guy calls in for help for something that he did to his own system and then gets even more angry and hangs up on you. That's fantastic. Humans suck. Yeah, he was probably embarrassed. My wife just said he probably felt stupid. And he might have, but you know what? You're going to need help again sometime in the future. At least be cordial and say, oh dear, I messed up and, you know, at least halfway own it, right? Did my job too well. Back in 95 or 96, I got pulled off a desktop refresh contract because I imaged six months of new PC in a week. My account manager failed to inform me that the contract, three other techs, had a deliverable schedule that was based on how long it would take to manually install Windows, drivers, and standard programs. The day I started, I was shown where the source files were, where the new inbox systems were, and told to have at it. At the end of the day, all three of my fellow contractors and the client's deployment manager informed me, Oh, hey, we forgot to tell you we won't be here for a week. Some of us are on vacation. Some are at a business conference. Do as many of those, pointing at the wall of PCs, as you can and have fun. I did all of them. Found four large switches. Used Ghost Multicast. Easy. I was totally surprised by the shock on the deployment manager's face and surprise on my coworkers' faces. Then later, the pissed off look of my account rep. The client ripped him a new one because he should have brought me in from the start. Then he lied to them and told them I was only available for that week to cover vacations and was already booked at another client. My girlfriend, who also worked at the client in another department, ratted out the truth. The account rep got banned from the client and the company took a huge hit to avoid fraud charges. Yeah, so that account rep sounded just like a lot of salesmen I've known in my life. That, you know, oversell the job, lie about it to get whatever to make yourself look better. And, uh... Yeah, just a bad look all the way around. Not what I thought when they put tech support in my job description. I got one for you. A story that's all too relatable. I recently got a position as a web admin slash tech support for a small company. I had the pleasure of having an office all to myself until they hired a few more people. Which is fine. I enjoy quiet and competent workers. Problem is, I have no idea how this one coworker still has a job. I should have known what I was in for when he asked me how to change the display orientation on his screens, but I gave him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he's just hired for answering phones and he's just stuck in this office with me because there aren't enough desks anywhere else. Even if he was hired to pick up calls, he's still underqualified. Next issue, after the screen orientation was his background photos. Wanted to change them. Then it was him asking me to proofread his emails. Not soon after, he was asking me how to set up a Facebook and at this point I began ignoring him. Unfortunately, he has demands and now my other new coworker is helping him along. Not what I thought I would be doing when I decided to be a web admin. 
Worst part of all is he just never stops talking. Showing up two hours later calling in sick, throwing me under the bus when there's a website issue, or asking me what the shortcut keys are to save on Google Docs. How is this man still working here? For the most part I've been keeping my head down and watching him slowly burn as we all slowly stop helping him do whatever it is he was hired to do. Wish I was joking. Signed, another nerd. So, there's either serious nepotism going on here or this guy paid somebody off to get this job. A lot of these jobs, isn't there like a test? Uh, I don't know if it's a big corporation here or a small office, whatever it is, but a lot of times, you know, I've, I mean, even when I got a small job welding in a small door shop, the guy that ran the shop still made me lay down a bead to make sure that I could actually make two pieces of metal stick together without it looking like uh, an orangutan did it. I don't know, did people just stop doing that and start taking the employee's words now or what? Oh well. I guess they'll figure it out and he'll be gone soon enough. The customer with a hammer. I'm in first line tech support for a large ISP and receive incoming calls from customers with tech support issues. Working here is a first step to get into the IT industry. A couple days ago I had a call that was very much not expected. Customer's internet wasn't working and we started the troubleshooting, and after a while we came up to the real issue at hand. Me equals me, C equals customer. Me. Okay, let's try swapping TP cables. Unplug the TP cable in your router and try the extra cable that was sent in the packaging. Customer. Sure, I'll go grab it. A minute or so passes. I have it now, but I can't get the cable out of the router. Me. There's a little plastic piece you need to hold down to unlock it and should be able to pull it out. Customer. I'm doing that, but it won't come out. Me. Try wiggling it a little and pulling. Customer. Nope. Doesn't come out. Why would you send me a broken router? The cable's completely stuck and it was a nightmare to even get the cable in there in the first place. <laughs> Me. What do you mean? Customer. Yeah, I had to use a hammer and hammer it in place. <laughs> Me. I I'm sorry. What? Customer. Yeah, I had to hammer the damn thing in there. Me. Uh, could you maybe take a picture and send it to my email so I can have a look at it? Customer. Sure. A few moments later, I received the picture. The customer had put the cable in upside down, hence why you couldn't get it in. We had to send him a replacement and had to bill the customer for the broken router. He got very upset that he had to pay for it, but I explained to him that we always send a manual with our routers, which includes written explanations with images, as well as a link to a video with instructions on how to plug everything in. Nowhere in these instructions is there ever any mentions of using a hammer, so he himself broke it and has to pay for it. Since the router we send out is just a loan for the time he's an active customer, I also made sure that the router that was sent out already had the TP cable plugged in correctly. After the call I thought to myself, that's a damn miracle that some customers are even able to tie their own shoes in the morning. Ain't that the truth. There's some people, like I said, they, they could be the nicest people in the world, but I wouldn't trust them to cross the street without somebody holding their hand. Um, yeah. How do people survive so long? I guess that's why it's called dumb luck, right? Well, hey guys, I hope you enjoyed these stories, and if you did, would you consider doing me a favor? Would you click that little like button down there, maybe subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon so you get notified the next time I upload a video, and then you won't miss the fat guy with the beard telling you stories from somewhere in the U.S. See ya!